Hey, NFT Plaza's community. It's Jake. You should hopefully know that by now. I'm with my uh, my new best friend, Colin Brady. So, Colin, tell me a little bit about your project and how you got into the NFT space. Sure, yeah. So, My Pet Hooligan is a very expressive Disney Pixar kind of NFT that not only do we have a kick-ass game, but you can actually play as your character with full-on facial and body emotions. Uh, my background is Pixar. I was one of the first animators on Toy Story, and I directed animation there as well. So I'm taking all those Pixar tricks that we figured out 30 years ago, we're putting them into Web3. But not just Web3, this is hopefully one of the best Web2 games around. So we don't want this game to just be for our NFT holders alone. We want a million players in this game by the end of the year. Wow, that's awesome. A million players. Love it. Ambitious. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, like, like Fortnite, you know, we want, we want people to be able to buy their own skins and to also make their own skins, sell their own skins, um, make their own dance, make their own dance moves, make their own um, content. Because our characters are so facial, uh, uh, facially expressive, we have um, comedy clubs, we have karaoke bars. So this, this is really more of a social experience that happens to have some really killer gaming involved, but we, we really see this as closer to a true Ready Player One experience. That's awesome, that's awesome. So tell me a little bit more about um, where the inspiration came from, from the NFTs. I know you said yeah. you have your, your, your animator background, yeah. but how did, how'd you come with the bunny? <laughs> like where'd the bunny so, come from? So let's see, that's a great, great question. I, I think in part, we know that um, we wanted something that had to be a little bit edgy. We wanted something, we wanted characters to reflect the actual community who buys these NFTs. So the crypto community, from our perspective, seem to be rebellious. They seem to be adventurous. They don't like to be controlled by large corporate algorithms. So we really leaned into that kind of naughtiness, these freedom-loving hooligans. And yes, it's tongue-in-cheek, but it's also, there's a reality to it as well. Our villain is Meta Zuckbot, oh. and all the bots <laughs> that attack you are Zuckbots. So we kind of have some fun with that. But um, uh, we wanted hooligans that were actually both cute and naughty at the same time. We like to think this is a cross between Grand Theft Auto and Zootopia. Huh. One game I love and one movie I like even better. So <laughs> that's, that's, that's right. great. And that's kind of our sweet spot. While most games are afraid to show close-ups of the faces, because faces often look very dead in video games, the eyes look very dead, we thought, you know what? Let's tackle that problem first. Let's be the first to really nail large expressive eyes, eyes that are focused on things, faces that are squashed and stretched in the kind of tradition of Disney and Pixar. So, uh, so these characters, they're edgy, but also we don't want them so edgy that it's not a family-friendly friend brand as well. We like to think that this is a, a property that can extend far beyond Web3 or Web2 gaming. We have plans for a feature film, and we're doing content actually weekly, and we want to present this content in the rabbit hole in our movie theater. Awesome, awesome. Very cool. Let's kind of like focus on the, the gaming aspect of it, sure. Rel. Can you tell us a little bit about the uh, gaming mechanics of it? Yeah, so it's kind of a battle royale. Uh, there are seven factions of hooligans. So we anticipate there's going to be kind of like both like last man standing, but also kind of different factions versus factions and kind of a um, capture the flag kind of games. But I also envision this to be very much like a um, like a uh, American Ninja Warrior, where you could watch this as a show. You see your character up close and you get to fall in love with their personalities, their hopes and their dreams as they compete. Within the game, we have many mini games. We have paintball, we have a, a, a driving game. People have asked us to add um, darts in the, in, the, in the bar, in the tavern that we've had. So ultimately, we do wanna turn this over to the community, very much like a Roblox, where we want the community to make their own content um, and and let them be as weird as they want. We feel the spirit of this game is that we believe in the power of the grassroots community and we want that to also reflect in the games they create. Amazing, amazing. And it and it seems like your project's uh, planning on longevity as well. I love to see you have all these other things going on, not just, you know, you're not focusing on one thing. It seems like you have the marketing and branding and all that other stuff as yeah, well, which is pretty cool. Absolutely. We just launched an app called IMI, I-M-M-I, and it's available for free for anyone who has an iPhone. Um, 
And that app allows you to animate full body characters using just your face alone. And we have some patented technology that's driving that kind of action. These characters also can be projected in AR. So we think of the metaverse as not something you put a box on your head and you go in. We like to think that less this benefits the real world, then we're not interested in it. So these characters can be um, uh, animated in real life and hopefully people will make their own content, their own fan fiction, their own comedy uh, in a way that actually gives this these characters life, but then have their own channels inside the rabbit hole. We think of this like a TikTok, uh, uh, you know, meets uh, Facebook, meets Instagram, combining all the best of social media, but with the added benefit of Web3 blockchain. Amazing, love to hear. So last and final question, where is the best place to find NFT news on the internet? NFT Plaza, of course. Love to hear it, boys. That's a wrap.